deciding I'm going to make a million dollars or I'm going to start running 50 miles a day or I'm going to stop drinking this year. And like, you know, New Year's Eve, those are all the last drinks you have. And then and then by February, you're back at the bar. So it really is about chunking it down and taking smaller bites of things and really doing it day by day. And and I talk about this in Badass Habits a lot. It's more about your identity than what you're doing, which is kind of the same thing Badass in money, mindset versus action. You know, it's about who you're being, not necessarily what you're doing. So with habits, a lot of us change what we're doing, which is important. But if the, if the identity piece isn't there, you will not last. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because I need them, because I want to wake up every single day and get pushed by somebody who's doing a lot more than me. And in watching their videos, it inspires me to be bolder, to have more courage, and to go chase down the life of my dreams. And I hope it does the same for you. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Jen Sincero, and my take on her top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. I was the kind of smoker who just, I like that first cigarette of the day. Like I'm going to actually start smoking again when I'm 80 and I'm super excited about it. But um, so anyway, I do, I, I love those things, but they're disgusting and they were killing me and whatever. So I was very excited to quit smoking and I quit all the time and I would start all the time. And it wasn't until I shifted my identity accidentally around smoking where I stopped negotiating with Oh, I'll have a drag or, you know, just tonight I'm going to smoke. You know, it's not a big whoop de doo And I'd automatically be up to pack a day right after that. But when I changed my identity as somebody who wasn't an ex smoker or somebody who hadn't quit smoking, I changed it to somebody who was healthy, who was in charge of her life, who was in control of her actions. I didn't even bring smoking into the equation because somebody who's never smoked isn't an ex-smoker, doesn't have smoking the equation. So it really becomes sort of like, I don't negotiate when I wake up in the morning, whether or not to drink a bottle of vodka, because that's not who I am. So Mm -hmm. when I wasn't an ex-smoker anymore, and I wasn't, you know, when I was much more focused on my health and doing things that were healthy, the cigarettes weren't even in my radar. So it really has so much to do with your focus, right? So when you identify, so this is why I say, if you're going to start running every day and you don't run at all right now, even just putting on your damn sneakers and running to the end of the driveway to get the paper and coming back, like you're getting in the, the start. Habit. Yes. You're getting in the habit of the habit. You are somebody who runs, who that is a part of your day. And you're starting to I- adopt that identity. Rule number two is visualize. Do you think we have to go through an identity shift in order to see money differently and to be able to receive it differently? I think you do. Absolutely. That's a really great way to go at it. So yeah. what was your, you know, the key words around your identity with money when you didn't have much versus the key words that you would speak about within yourself or what money is once you started to unlock more money? Well, it wasn't necessarily around identity, my words, because I did have two very serious mantras. Um, but there was a lot of visualizing myself with money. Like I, I wrote about buying the Audi and you are a bad and like, I'm not the kind of person who drives an Audi. Are you kidding me? Like, and like almost feeling like this, the guy who is like test drove it with me would be like, get out of here. I know who you are. (laughs) You can't afford this. Exactly. So, um, so, but my mantra is really like, and before I started making money, I said, I can't afford it to pretty much anything you could throw at me. My first words out of my mouth were, I can't afford it. We are buying into an identity as somebody who can't afford stuff. We are also proving it. You know, what you speak, you want to prove because you want to be right. And it is sort of the foundation of your reality. So when I say I can't afford it a hundred times a day, I'm subconsciously pulling in proof, like, look at the car I'm driving. I'm living in an alley. Like, I make this much money a year. I'm, I'm building all the foundational blocks to prove that I can't afford it. And that becomes my reality. And then that becomes my, I like to call it familiarity zone because comfort zones are not comfortable. Interesting. Right? So, so then I'm just proving it over and over and over. And that becomes my reality. Rule number three is focus on making money. Do you mind sharing some of the places that you, I guess, were that you unpack? Sure, you really want to know? Not I would so like pretty. to. Hey, so I know the feeling. I, I, I do this all the time. So yes, I most definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, my whole journey started around money mm. because I had a lot of other parts of my life going really well, but I was just always so, so broke. And 
So in my 40s, I was living in a garage, in an alley, wow. driving a car that barely worked. And I thought to myself, you know, not only is being broke really boring because mm -hmm. you can't do anything. Yeah. But I was like, really, Jen Sincero? This is the best you can freaking do in your one shot on planet Earth. You're going to spend it living in an alley in a garage. Mm. So for me, it was this painful moment of just being like, I, I, I'm unavailable for this. I can't do this anymore. You know, and I had all my excuses and all the proof that I sucked at making money, a, a lifetime's worth of proof. And then I started focusing on making money. And that one act of allowing myself to focus on the unholy dollar yeah. was what started to crack me open. Because a lot of times everybody wants to make money and you know get more successful. And they think money is evil and that people yeah. who focus on money have no morals. So mm -hmm. you never get anywhere. And that's how I was for the majority of my life. Yeah. So giving myself permission to make money was the first step. And, and I write a lot about that in all my books. Rule number four is change your thinking. I had... Uh, actualize a lot of parts of my life. Like I was in a rock band and I was living by the beach and I had lots of great friends and I traveled, but the damn money thing, like that was always the dead end The like thou shalt not pass. When I was living at the beach, I was living in an alley in a garage, but I was near the beach. Um, so for me, I just, I just could not believe that, I was going to spend my one and only time on planet earth sucking at really living my life. Cause let's face it, you know, money is not everything, but money is the tool that we human beings use to move through this world. And if you don't have any, it really makes it difficult and not fun. And, you know, money is just basically freedom and opportunities. And when you don't have any, your freedom and opportunities are super limited. And I just, I was, first of all, it's really boring being broke. So I was really bored and I was also really disappointed that in myself that this was the best I could do. So those were sort of my motivations to getting it going. And at 40, I was like, geez, if I haven't figured this out yet, what? So yeah. that's why I started reading all the self-help books and studying mindset, Elizabeth. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is develop an abundance mindset. What do you think are the key things that abundant mindset people around money do differently than scarcity mindset mm. people around money? If you had to say three or five kind of key things. They appreciate it, as you said, that that is a biggie. They appreciate it and they speak about it as they love it. They're not weird about it. They're also generous with it because when you pinch yourself off from giving you, that is sort of a subconscious way of saying there's not enough to go around and it's not going to be, I'm not in the flow. So when you don't give generously, it's because you're scared that it's not going to come in anymore. Um, they take risks. You know, you got to take risks. You are where you are because you've been doing what you've been doing. So if you want to change your life, you've got to do stuff you've never done. Um, what else? Wealthy people. They learn about money. Like you you focus on money. Like that was such a big thing for me too. Like when I was broke, I I never wanted to think about money, right? I was all about writing songs and, you know, doing much, you know, more noble things. Sure, sure. But then, but when you're broke, all you think about is money. Like I don't really think about money that much now that I have it. Like, but every single decision you make when you're broke is about Do I have enough to pay for this? Exactly. Can I afford it? What happens if I don't have it? Right. Yet? You wake up in the first thing in the morning in a panic because you gotta pay your bills. So you're always thinking about money. So it is really just sort of getting in the flow with that and just, you know, being on good terms with it and, and focusing on it. And 
And, you know, how are you going to make it? Like being realistic about your income streams and, you know, and if you want to make it, you've got to coax it in, you right, know, give right. it. Rule number six is be who you are. Anybody who's being a badass is somebody who gives themselves permission to be, do, and have whatever's in their heart. I mean, it's a bold thing to do because we are very primal and tribal and you leave the pack and you get eaten by a wolf, mm -hmm. you know? Like we're really, we find safety in numbers. And so to go out on your own is, is kind of primally terrifying. Yeah. But then you find your new pack and you're running bigger and you know, and you've transformed yourself and you've created this whole new world that your old pack that may not fit you anymore um, would never have gotten you to. Wherever you're happy, you know, yeah. I'm a big believer in, you don't, not everybody has to make millions of dollars. Not everybody True. has to have all the things. So, and that's a real challenge too, right? Blocking out all of the shoulds and the mm. opinions and the judgments and getting really quiet and being like, what is my truth? What brings me joy? Yeah. And then allowing yourself to go out and create that. It's very audacious yeah. to let yourself be whoever the hell you are. It's, it's incredible it is. how audacious that is. But you know, when you meet somebody who's just doing it and does not give a single crap about what anybody else thinks, mm -hmm. that is one of the greatest gifts in the world. It is yeah. the most inspiring thing to meet somebody like that. Rule number seven is set boundaries. We live in a patriarchal society that trains us to put everybody's needs in front of our own if we even have the audacity to look at our own needs at all. Right. So um, it's about reframing that and being like, oh, yeah, you know what? My needs matter not only because I matter, but also the more I take care of myself, the more able I am to take care of others. So when you reframe it like that and when you understand that setting healthy boundaries is an enormous part of that you're actually doing a favor for that person who is pitching a temper tantrum because you haven't dropped all of your needs in order to service them. And this is so important to, to get yourself into this space of understanding that it's not only okay, but it's a super important positive thing for everybody. Because then when you set the boundary, you're not doing it in this way that's apologetic or whiny or you know just waiting for the pushback. You're confident in it, you say the way it is, and you move the hell on. Because if you're weird about it, they're going to be weird about it, right? I mean, we all know what it's like to meet somebody who's no nonsense about their boundaries. Like, yeah, I'm not available for that at all, but I will help you do this because I'm okay with that. You just take their word for it. But you got to take your own word for it first. And, and I really think that comes from from understanding that you're doing everybody favorable, you you will have more energy because the other thing is you spend a lot of energy in passive aggressive feelings oh my God. and resentment yeah. when you overextend yourself. Right. And, and who likes being around somebody who's passive aggressive towards, you know, when someone's passive aggressive towards me, I'm like, what the hell did I do? You don't know. It's, it's fun free for everybody involved. So fun free <laughs> getting on board with the, with the reality that, Setting boundaries benefits everybody is the first step for sure. Rule number eight is stop caring what others think. What has been the three. biggest lesson in three books mm -hmm. since then? Yeah. What has been the biggest lesson in 10 years since you are bad to now? Personally, hmm. physically, and financially. This sounds cold, but like not caring what other people think about me. Like that is something that I'm really dedicated to right now where it's like the one star reviews, and the five-star reviews, you know, it's like, believe me, I'm so grateful yeah, anybody good. reads the book, but the five-star reviews are the real dangerous ones, right? Where you're just like, I'm so cool. People think I'm funny and smart. You know, really getting good inside, like just being like, it doesn't matter as long as I think it's good and I think it's funny and I think it's helpful. That's it. And so that has been really important to me because it is weird. I mean, I'm sure you too, like people know who you are and it's like, it's it's a little uncomfortable sometimes. I mean, it's great too. Like I love meeting my readers, but it's just like, I can't get too wrapped up in their opinion of me because it's about my opinion of me. Mm, so that's been a oh, really well, yeah. big one. Rule number nine is quit playing small. I truly believe that humans are so terrified of the unknown, right? The big, the big baddie, death. Yeah. Death could be the most 
kick-ass thing you've ever experienced. We don't know, <laughs> I, I but guess we're terrified could. of it because yeah. it's unfamiliar. Yeah, true. So we cling to the familiar and we cling to our identities and we get mad when our friends change who they're being, right? Mm-hmm. That's a big problem when you start to oh, yeah. grow and transform yourself. A lot of your closest people make fun of you or tell you, or, or tell you it's going to be hard or tell you you can't do it or whatever. It's because that change into unfamiliar territory freaks us out. How do you battle that? Because that's what I mean. How do you battle the friendships? Because I know exactly what you're talking about. And most people are afraid of leaving, being cast off from the friend group. Mm -hmm. How do you trudge through that? You make new friends who are going to support you. And you you don't stay small in your tiny, sad little life to keep the people around you happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got one shot at this. So it is, it, it, it's the number one question I get when I, when I do talks really? or coach or oh, whatever is what do you yeah. do when the people around you don't support you because it's, it's so common. Yeah. You're basically killing off your old identity yeah. and people get really angry when you kill somebody they love. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is do things that scare you. You emphasize the importance of doing things that scare you. Mm, Why yeah. is that? I know. Why is that? Uh, okay. So, so because, you know, we talk a lot about the comfort zone in our work, uh, but I actually prefer the familiarity zone because the comfort zone is not terribly comfortable, right? Like my comfort zone was being broke and hanging out with people who bitched and moaned about having no money. Like that was what I was used to doing. So that was my comfort zone, but it was my familiarity zone. Um, and so basically you have to scare the crap out of yourself on a regular basis because humans are terrified of the unfamiliar. So if it's familiar and it's comfortable, it is not scary. So, you know, when you're scared, you're doing something new because you got to where you are right now by doing everything you're doing and thinking everything you're thinking and saying everything you're saying to change that is going to be unfamiliar and scary. So I talk a lot about, uh, it's not about, you know, jumping off a you know bungee jumping or, you know, unless that's your thing, but it's that fear and excitement where it's like, you know, two sides ah. of the same coin. Yes, exactly. It's, it's actually the same feeling, right? Like I yeah. feel terror and excitement in my chest. It's the same feeling. So you want that terror excitement, you know, whatever yeah. that mix of terror and excitement. And then, you know, I, I truly believe that if all of us, regardless of if it's finding love or they're making money or growing your business or, you know, whatever your thing is, if you scare the crap out of yourself on a daily basis in the direction that you want to go, I, your life will change so quickly. You won't even know it hit you, it, it, but it's really about taking that chance and stepping outside. So I, it's kind of a fun game. And, and this is another thing that I talk about a lot. It's like, just see what you can get away with. Take away the drama, like just see if you can double your income this year. Just see if you can double your income this month, this week. Why not? We're on a ball in infinite space right now, people. Who cares? Like, make it a game. It, we don't, it, it's all so bizarre anyway. Why not just see if you can get away with it? I just think, you know, we get so weighted down by the drama and the cancer and how hard it is. the biggest thing that comes up for people is imposter syndrome. And so I want you to actually highlight this because people would look at you and be like, well, of course she's a coach. I mean, she's a genius. She's made multi-millions of dollars. But in your books, you're very vulnerable and naked about like, I was living in a garage. I was 40. I was eating cans of tuna fish. And our listeners are like, who am I to say that I'm anything? Mm. Who am I to help somebody else? Meanwhile, they're looking at you. You're literally living proof of this, but they're not able to necessarily cross that river for themselves. How can you help people with that? Uh, By telling them that I had, I think, three books out before I could actually say out loud without throwing up in my mouth that I am a writer. I had such a fraud complex around that. You? You're literally the best writer. You are the, it's the funnest thing in the world to read your book. It's like watching a movie. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> but it's true. And I remember just feeling oh my like God. it was beginner's luck and same with coaching. I actually was just talking about this morning about how, like, I still, I think I'm an okay coach. Like I still have a little bit of the frauds around the coaching thing. It doesn't really necessarily go away is what I'm going to say. I know I'm a good writer now, but it took a long time. I just want to know that. Um, 
It doesn't necessarily go. So don't wait for it to go away. It's like fear. Don't wait for fear to magically disappear. Fear is not going anywhere. Move on instead. Like act as if. Go forth and prosper in spite of. So don't don't wait for your fraud complex to go away. Just keep taking action. Keep educating yourself. Keep pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. And eventually it will melt away after so much proof of the fact that you kick ass. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Gabby Bernstein, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. There was a lot of concern, a lot of uncertainty, constant fear around finances. I decided to have a quantum shift. I chose to adjust my mentality around money.